Alright, so man, I ain't gonna lie. As a Heat fan, bro, I don't even know what to tell you. If any nigga tell you that they seen this out of Jimmy Butler in any of the previous years, the closest thing was the finals in the bubble. Last year, he was good in a lot of stretches, but for to do this for every round, and like, his off games to be so obvious why. Like, in the Knicks series, it was double team, triple teams. The Bucks, they guarded him one-on-one. He was giving them buckets. In the first two games of the uh, Heat versus Celtics series, I'm going to be honest, first game, he was giving them buckets. Second game, he kind of struggled, and then Grant Williams. Like, if you watch that, if you even just watch the highlights, you can see how much Jimmy started taking off. But, I'm going to be honest. From a Jimmy perspective, man, I just don't know what to really say. From a Heat perspective, I just don't really know what to say. We like a completely different team. You can say that it's better without Hero. I would say I don't think that's the case. I think it's really just been a lot of matchups. Like when we played the Knicks, they were doubling Jimmy. Our team struggled. When it came to the Celtics, they doubled Jimmy tonight. Our team didn't struggle. But against the Bucks, one on one, Celtics for the majority of the series has been one on one. Our team has been shooting lights out again. So I think there that's the connection because even against the Knicks, we kind of still struggled to shoot the three. But uh this Jimmy, this Jimmy thing, man, I don't don't know we're gonna react to a video talking about why is jimmy butler so good in the playoffs honestly i want to know i want to know what it is that takes him to another level i think it's just the fact that like his sheer want to win like that bro watching these games they just want it more i don't think they have a better team than the celtics i don't think they have a better team than the bucks and shout out to the people that saying Giannis, he missed three games bro he played the first game and they were down double digits the whole first half and in the first half, Hero got hurt too. So in the second half, it was a pretty much double digit lead the whole time, but it never got like it never got worse. It wasn't like it got worse when Giannis got hurt or something. So I don't know what they're saying with that. And then in the games that Giannis didn't play fully, they won one, we won one. In the games that Giannis played fully, they were up 15 points twice in the fourth quarter. They lost. That's not that's not it's not defensible. It's not defensible. Let's hop into it, bro. How does Jimmy Butler keep doing this? In the last two years, he's gone from 22 points per game during the season. Team heard tonight. a good explanation for how he's able to upgrade like this. I mean, watch these four plays from the opening quarter of the Eastern Conference Finals, where playoff Jimmy torched the Celtics for 35 Midi. points. Uh, it's does time. Anything jump out? When Jimmy started getting that drink how going, I'm just going, it's time. 40, six times in the last two postseasons, after not having a single 40 point game in the regular season since 2017. And honestly, bro, I don't know if he's gonna say he's just being more aggressive, but I'm gonna be honest. I don't even know if it's as simple as being more aggressive because he still has to hit the shots. And a lot of the shots he's taking, I'm gonna be honest, this year in the fourth was the best he ever I ever seen Jimmy. Like before this year, in a regular season, he would kind of choke a lot of games with trolling. But this year, he was really clutch in the fourth quarter. I seen in the game, he had 16 points in the like the last four minutes of the game. No misses. All buckets. Like, I don't know, bro. I don't really know what to say. Um, and people were saying even that the... Bro, it's so many different narratives people are saying. Like, they trying to say now that the East is weak when they had the two favorites. Like all year, everybody was saying the Bucks and the Celtics, the Bucks and the Celtics, the Bucks and the Celtics. The week, the West is weak. It's gonna be a really like it's like like people don't remember that the Lakers were the 13th seed and they was even like having debates on the fact that they were like two games out of like the fifth or fourth seed. Like I don't know why people are trying to change it up, but hey, get them boys they credit. They was trying to say the bubble was real, but now that the Lakers is losing, the Celtics losing. Now I ain't now I ain't hearing that no more. Oh, no. Well, after watching him closely, I think I have an idea. Jimmy Butler is quietly a basketball genius. It's subtle at first. Instead of bending defenses around, he usually just takes what they give him. On this first yes, play, he wants Bam. That's, okay, I don't know what he was going to say. Yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy entire game. Is literally predicated off the scheme of the offense and the spacing we create for it. So Jimmy, majority of the time, is just going to take what you give him. If you double-team him, he's most likely going to be passive. That's what he was pretty much the whole Knicks series. But in the Knicks series, he was hurt. Last night, they double-teamed him from the get-go, triple-teamed him, all that. He was passive. ...to set the screen because he knows Rob Williams will drop. He hesitates a little to get Rob moving back to the basket. 
but that's so his step back is basically uncovered. Butler has been around league average from the mid-range for a while, but this year he shot these at 47%. And that's another thing when it comes to the Bucks and the uh, Celtics. When it comes to those two teams, they have a big that wants to play drop coverage. That's why when it came to the Celtics, they went with Derek White instead of Robert Williams in game three because they noticed that we was kind of using Bam to attack that coverage a lot. And it was getting a lot of our shooters like Duncan Struess and even the Caleb Martins in game two hot early. And it, it was the same thing that happened in the Milwaukee series. Now, in the Milwaukee series, it was more so Jimmy hooping a lot, too. But, yeah. So if defenses throw a drop coverage at him, he'll just walk into comfortable looks. He calls Williams up again. Giannis should never be in a drop coverage, saw, though. He's too good this is just dynamically, to set a even if he's not a crazy own ball He goes defender. to pull up at the free throw line, but gets a little closer. So Rob goes to challenge the shot. And that's all to set that's up, a travel, up and it? under, and he draws a foul. Is that not a travel? That was a ticky-tack call, but Butler is an absolute master of using pump fakes in the paint. It's basically, basically right his there, version of honest. a dream shake works because of these pivots and pump fakes. Good Here footwork. he's dancing with Derek White. It's good footwork. Runs into traffic, but pump fakes White off his That's not even really taking what you give him. That's foul. really good basketball. But the free throws aren't key here. The setup is because a few minutes later, he's isolated against White again, drives left into almost identical help, but now White is glued to the floor on those up fakes, so Jimmy uses his size to wheel back for a fade. And this is the thing. I'm be honest, Derek White be playing some good defense. If you've seen that jump stop enough, you aren't always expecting the shot. His feel in these little moments around the basket is almost Here's a good feel for the game. Driving into the paint and pausing yeah. it off a cut like this, the fake and the shot that's look a good pass. the same. That's a, that's, now Speaking that play right there, we won a we won game like this. We won game the, five off of stuff like this because we just took Brook Lopez out the paint, and that opens up the lane for people to go back door. We got a lot of points off of Duncan doing that, Strews doing that, but mainly in the Buck series, it was really Jimmy doing that. Now. The other teams have now adjusted to that because we did that a lot. Like those last two games of that Buck series, we really had Bam being the facilitator really heavily in that fourth quarter of both of those games. Fake and the shot look the same. Speaking of cuts, Jimmy is a master of moving around and finding little creases in the defense. Normally when a team sets up an empty side pick and roll, it's so they attack into all this open space. But Butler knows they want to bring an extra defender over to neuter the action. So he instinctively floats away to the open area on the baseline for a little jumper. Watch him read Jason Tatum's eyes here so he can sneak back door undetected and he has a layup on this one, but they just miss him. On this one, Giannis Antetokounmpo is matched up with him in the backcourt. So Jimmy realizes he can out sprint him down the court. And but that that's just walk. Giannis not hustling. Because Jimmy is not faster than Giannis. Giannis can literally get from that one end to the other with four steps. That's just Giannis just not hustling. Into that's a not really Jimmy. Pull up. That's just us really out His hustling, out working them right there. That's even just, show up that's just on bad. The offensive glass, it's the playoffs. Where he drives and dishes here, immediately realizes the shot is going up, so he slips into that open space and tips it in for an That could have been one. a foul. Oh, it wasn't and all this works because Jimmy is so but That's bad big, hustle again. Listed at six foot seven. They're just standing around looking, nobody pounds. boxing. But it also works because he's a master of using that size and strength sealing defenders for easy catches at the rim and, jo and josh and had a also smart see him get real, a ton of cheap real buckets in defender. transition by leaking out and out leaping defenders for passes in the air like this think, right hey bro the best db in the league is uh Fittingly, jimmy butler hands this down you can't, you can't debate it. set up maybe the biggest shot of his career trailing by two with two seconds left that's a good play he threw this in while man. falling down to force overtime not a crazy spot left. about this by the bucks though they really left shoots wide open. Now the ball is halfway in the air. He threw this in while That's falling a crazy down to game. force overtime. It's like in literally the clinching game against Milwaukee. And, and hey, if Michael Jordan's That's most so, that famous was such a crazy play, has a little bro, push off, so can Jimmy's. But to me, the ingeniousness on this play is that the pass arrives late. Jimmy recognizes that, so he stops to seal his defender on one side of the hoop because he tracks the ball so well. Reading the flight of the ball like a center fielder is a Butler special. Missing a pull-up, then game. instantly finding oh, it off the rim for a quick do-over. I remember that. 
this that was actually so weak when I seen that shit. I'm not mental lie. mapping of the game that, that was gives actually, him an advantage it's a lot of people that can't follow their own miss and really helps him on defense. Butler is one of the best ever at reading passing lanes. Are we doing? Are we doing deliveries. highlights from last year again? I see PJ Tucker on the ball heat. and his opponent's eyes, like he possesses the shining gun, scanning Al Horford here, checking the target, then sitting on the pass for the interception. As much as I love PJ Tucker, on one thing why we so much better Knicks, this year too is because we're not playing four Taylor and five on Brunson offense no more like last year. Manipulate him by like, head faking to the top. Going against but teams like Butler the Celtics and Bucks can't take advantage of that no more by having anyway. Brook Lopez and on the court. He sensed something was up. And Everybody on our team can kind of shoot before Brunson threw it. Seriously, this dude is on and really level. streaky with it. Most players are thinking about taking away the cutter here, but Butler tags him and goes and takes the skip pass out of the air. The best DB That's in the league, man. Ridiculous. I'm trying to tell y'all, best DB Butler in the league. Always seems to know where everyone is and what they want to do. And since he's best under DB in the league, I'm trying to tell y'all, bro. He speed, sees that. That helps his playmaking too. In game one against Boston. I'm not going to lie. That's one thing that really blows me when I watch the Heat. These niggas take too many transition threes. I'm not going to lie. That's so stupid. plays where he drove into help, understanding exactly where the open man was, setting up Caleb Martin trifectas. He has Rob Williams on a C switch Martin's this time. Auto, tries I'm not a little lie. fake to throw off his balance, but he can't quite get free. Goes to pivot spin and knows Martin's open in the corner great of pass. that help. And in a huge Auto. possession down the stretch, Butler again this worked was his amazing. way into the paint, jump stopped, and when he felt corner help, instantly fed Caleb for a huge. Seymour Otto, man. The thing is, Butler imagine isn't letting even him go. Great pass. I wonder what team I let him go. He missed this slip cut here, but he's good yeah, enough to that. be the playmaker the Heat need. Patiently prodding and probing defenses until they overcommit to his scoring. That's a great pass. We've seen him drive out of pick and roll. And here he just skips along to pull the coverage toward him to open up Kevin Love's pop behind the line. Now rewatch that first quarter play. He waves off Bam Adebayo because he doesn't want Jalen Brown switching onto him. And that also frees up Love to pop into space. I don't know why so they have Jimmy Malcolm Brogdon guarding Jimmy anyway, look. though. Rob All the people they can put on him, why is Malcolm Brogdon ever guarding him? Score. Especially off the rip. So the next time down, that's just when basketball. Butler gets the switch, that's who should Williams, be guarding the majority of the time. He just walks him to the other side of the But it's not going to work either. Into an easy 17-footer. I'm not sure anyone dribbles into the corners more than Jimmy Butler like this to find something to work with. On this one, he tells Martin to clear out the far corner, but instead of the screener popping into this space like we saw with Love earlier, Butler decides to just dribble over there and catches his man off guard with a pull-up. But he liked that little baseline that shot. That's why he liked going to the corner. Shooting, which seems to magically That's his little shot, that little playoffs. baseline shot. He's a career 32% shooter during the year, but that jumps to 35% in the postseason. It's a small enough sample that some of it might be luck, but also, what Nigga kind of 32% NBA player shooter relocates in three big series for perfect dagger threes? I don't actually think he's much better than his regular season numbers, but some players shrink he's, in big Wait, moments. you don't think he's much better than his regular season numbers? Oh, you're crazy, bro. This is how I know people. Bro, I watch the Heat. Bro, I watch the Heat all 82 games. I watched the tip, bro. I said this was ass all season because they weren't. The most, ri bro, the most Miami Heat thing for this year is what's happening. They was that up and down. They never knew when they understood. Bro, on Udonis Haslam night, on Udonis Haslam night, they lost by 30 to the Nets. Not the KD, Kyrie, the Mikael Bridges Nets. They had like a, they had like a six point third quarter in the Udonis Haslam night. They got out-rebound. They got uh, out-hustled on a Udonis Haslam night. So don't tell me that this team is the same that you've seen from last year or from the regular season. Because it's not. It's not. It's nothing similar. It's nothing similar. Similar schemes because Spo is telling them to do, but they're still stepping up. Especially Jimmy. Especially Bam. Bam may not step up all the time offensively or defensively. He always steps up. But I ain't gonna lie, saying that Jimmy looks the same, even though Jimmy probably had probably his best offensive season this year. But nah, bro, no.
moments. The well, consistency Butler Jimmy has had in the playoffs is unbelievable. Down two against the box in game four. He lollygagged his way into this go-ahead three. Then on the next possession, just ran down the court like a maniac and dropped in another backbreaker. Nigga talking about luck. Only to declare, this is my specialty. My specialty. Or, not what he said. as Kevin Harlan put it, when Butler hit this long backbreaker to clinch game one in Boston. They got to hold that. <laughs> they got to hold that. Yeah, Jimmy freaking Butler. What else can you say? He doesn't have the fastest first step, a ton of fancy moves, and he isn't even a great shooter, but he understands how to manipulate. Just say it. It's IQ. I, I don't know what you did all this. For. You ain't say it one time. Just say it. It's IQ. The feel for the game is IQ. He has the IQ and the just the want, the want and will to win the game. Like, Jimmy, I seen somebody say, Jimmy Butler does all the things it takes to be a great role player, but also provides you with superstar traits. Like, you're not going to feel that from any other superstar. And one thing I did notice as well, for the first time in my whole time of watching basketball, when it comes to these teams, you can blame the coaches. You can blame all this, that, and the third. But a lot of the full team, like, mentality, based off whoever the best player is on the team. So, like, when it comes to the Lakers, they are a real defensive team. Who the best player? Anthony Davis. When it comes to the Heat, we are real, like, at the end of the game, we going to get that job done. Ain't no, ain't no choking at the end of the game. We going to do whatever it takes to get that win. When it comes to a lot of these teams, they don't really have that. A lot of these teams, they just they just kind of lollygag because that's kind of what they star player do. A lot of these teams not going not gonna to do everything it takes. They're not going to always hustle at all times when you need it. They're not going to always, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a lot of things that people just got to understand, bro. When it comes to the end of the game, when it comes to the beginning of the game, when it comes to any time of the game, you just got to do what it takes to win the game. And that's really all the Heat really doing. I don't think they really was even better than the Knicks. But I went into the series, I said, if they beat the Bucks, I guarantee they beat the Knicks. They beat the Knicks. Like, we wanted to play the Celtics before the Bucks. We didn't want to play the Bucks. I tell you right now, we thought we was getting swept by the Bucks. I did. Almost every Heat fan would tell you that. They beat the Bucks. I don't really know what else to really tell you. Jimmy Butler at this stage, like, it's unbelievable. It's not, it's not three people that's playing better than in these playoffs. I would only say two. But yeah, Jimmy Butler, he's done all he should. Um, he's, he, he deserves this. I hope he gets a ring as a, even a Heat fan. But Jokic is going to make it tough. Hopefully, this series not over. It's 3-0. It's not over. But it's going to be tough, man. I can't really wait. Let's see what he say the rest of this. All that makes him perfect for the tactical counters, in-game adjustments, and strategic flexibility of the playoffs. Along with, you know, he's just Jimmy freaking Butler. To support this channel. Okay, well, he didn't really say much else. Um, I ain't gonna lie. One thing I did notice from this uh, playoff run, Jimmy has gotten some of the best nicknames I've ever heard all time. Like Hemi Butler. Uh, it was another one that was like something Jordan. He got some crazy nicknames given to him this playoff. And he's kind of lived up to him, man. Shout out Jimmy, man. I wasn't, I, I've said in time past that I would trade Jimmy. Because I didn't think we could win with, like, two non-score, like, shooting, like, players that's your best two players. Because Jimmy and Bam, neither one of them, like, want to shoot the three a lot. And I thought in today's basketball, you need one of them to be able to shoot the three. And maybe I still may be right. Maybe we don't win a ring this year because of that. But to go from what we was in the regular season to what we did so far in the playoffs, I can't do nothing but be happy, man. I can't do nothing but be happy. If you guys want more of these reactions, just make sure to like the video. Make sure to subscribe if you're new. All that good stuff out the way. Appreciate y'all boys. Without further ado, Mr. Boy Fitz. Out of it, man. Tell him to bring me my money. Yeah!